Hey everyone, this is Veronica. Thanks for joining me for my daily perfume and makeup of the day video upload. It's kind of a gloomy, cold day here in Central Virginia and I'm wanting a perfume that's going to hold its own, give me a little mystery and maybe talk back to me a little bit today <laughs> during the day. So that perfume today is going to be one that I have struggled with because I love it and I hate it. So I think it's perfect for this kind of day. I describe this perfume as that family member that you have trouble getting along with, but you really love them. So you're happy to see them at the reunion. You like to talk to them for about a good 10, 15 minutes and then maybe not see them again for a year. That's this perfume. And it is Knowing by Estee Lauder. Who remembers this one? This came out in the 80s. I am an 80s kid and it brings back lots of memories. This has 80s DNA all over it. It's a woody, aromatic, earthy scent. It's mossy, it's animalic, and it does have some florals too. I would read you the notes, but there are so many in here. Y'all, we would be here through several cups of coffee if I got through all of that. What I do want to share with you is that it's classified as a Shepra floral. And the notes that stand out for me, for me, on the top, lots of aldehydes. It has that sort of soapy Chanel number no. five thing going on. And I also get coriander, some green notes, and some plum in the top notes. The middle notes that jump out to me as it starts to settle into, you know, its, its bloom are patchouli, cardamom, I get a little bit of that cedar, that orris root, and it has bay leaf in it. So in that sense, this is considered a pretty spicy perfume. Uh, and then the base notes are oak moss and oak moss, sorry, patchouli, and then the civet comes out for me. It does have a lot more. It has some spices, some sandalwood, some musk, and some orris root in the dry down. But that's what stands out to me. As I sniff this, what comes to mind as descriptive words are that it's, it's very green. It's very earthy. I'm not sure where the name knowing comes from. Um, haven't read up on sort of the story behind that. The bottle here reminds me so, so much of bottles in the 80s. This is a little one. And if you want to know why I bought a little one, it's because I had a bigger one probably about um, maybe, maybe no, more than 10 years ago, maybe about 15 years ago. I had a bigger one and had this love hate thing going on with it. And so I ended up giving it away and wanted to bring it back into my collection recently. Now, if you know me, you know that I like to layer scents and play with that. And so because this is so sort of aldehydic in the opening and you do still smell some of that as it starts to dry down, I want something that's going to give it a little bit more roundness than just that kind of soapy background that the aldehydes give. And I'm going to actually layer it, but just on one arm because I'm weird and I like to test things out that way <laughs> and I'm working from home, so who cares? I'm going to layer it with Cannabis Santal from Fresh which has this really beautiful, super duper green note in here, almost like fresh cut grass with dirt mashed in. Um, so I will lay down knowing on one arm and spritz this over that just to kind of test out how those work together. I did try out that combination a little bit on one part of my arm this morning, and I really love it. This one helps to round out knowing. So whereas knowing is deep, it's complex, um, it's slightly soapy, as I mentioned. It has that earthy, spicy thing. There's so much going on with knowing. This fresh cannabis santal helps to lighten it up just a little bit um, and give it a bit of a fresher feel as you know, fresh is the company, but a fresher feel. So that's what I'm doing. In case you guys are wondering what's happening over here with this one, you guys, this is <laughs> Burberry Body. I have such a hard time figuring out what to do with this girl. She is like that enormous cruise ship that holds, you know, the 6,000 passengers and no one knows where to dock her. There's only one place to put her. So, I mean, I could 
you know, put her back there somewhere. But she kind of stands out. She's like that super duper seven foot tall woman that's, you know, an anomaly. Uh, so anyway, I decided to just lay her here and let her hang out in all her glory. Anyway, back to our scent of the day. It's going to be knowing. And on one arm, layered with cannabis santal. Let's go check out the makeup of the day. I have a full set of makeup. I've already done my makeup. And so I'm able to tell you exactly what I did today. Let's go see. All right, we got a full face of office glam makeup for you all today. Let's run through the base products. I've got on Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer. It does have some SPF in it. This is a silicone free primer. I use it uh, on days when I want a little bit of extra moisture on my skin. And today is one of those days. I did do a little self tanning at home yesterday and sometimes, and maybe, maybe it's just my imagination, but I feel like my skin is a little bit drier after I do that. So I appreciate the extra moisture on top of my regular moisturizer. Decent primer. I would not repurchase because for the price that this commands, it's just not that special of a primer, but I will finish using the bottle and I have enjoyed using it. I will also use my usual Becca Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer to fill in the fine lines under my eyes. This has a really soft, easy to work with texture. A little bit goes a long way. You just dab your finger in and fill in those uh, lines under your eyes to help prep then for your concealer. And my concealer today is going to be the NARS. What is your official name? Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the little pot. First of all, the pots are just so darn cute. I have mine in medium one custard which looks a little bit darker in the pan than it actually goes on on the skin. But I like to do this in patting motions and um, it really does help to sort of cancel out dark circles and so forth under the eyes. You can also use this, I guess, as a shadow primer, although I've never done that. And speaking of shadow primer, today it's going to be the MAC Paint Pot in soft ochre it's not going to be it is like i said i've already done my makeup today i woke up extra early you guys with the farm animals i don't have a farm around me but you guys know what i mean <laughs> i'm keeping farm hours i got up at a very ridiculous hour of the morning i wanted to go ahead and get my day started get ready uh, put my makeup on and get the kids ready for school today i've got a lot of meetings and i wanted to make sure i filmed this video for you guys before my meeting started early so anyway in Soft Ochre, the MAC Paint Pot for my eyeshadow primer, which is a nice waxy base for if you want to do a dramatic eye look. It'll help keep your eye look in place. Foundation today is a favorite, and that's the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I do have the Laura Mercier Longwear foundation which is the matte one this is lumiere so it has a little bit of luminosity to it helps give your skin a little bit of extra lift at least in appearance on a day like today like i was saying i felt like it was a bit drier today this is a bit of a darker color for me but like i said i tanned yesterday so this is 3w golden 3w2 golden i don't love the pumps on the laura mercier foundations they're really they're just annoying but the stuff that's in it is phenomenal. This one and the matte one are ride or die foundations. And they, they blend out like a dream. By the way, I wanted to share with everyone. Yes, this looks disgusting. But, you know, when it comes to foundation application, nothing in my mind, nothing beats either your fingers, if you're willing to get a little bit messy, or a sponge. This is the Real Techniques, I forget the name of the exact sponge, but it looks like that. I rarely ever use the other end. I always just use the flat end. I will run it under the, the sink, the water, and then squish out as much as I can and it leaves it slightly damp. And I will either then put the foundation on my skin or I'll put it right on the sponge. And then I will tap it and bounce it around my face until I get the finish that I'm looking for. It just does so well. It doesn't leave any streaks. It gives a smooth application and it makes the foundation look the most skin-like for me. 
So you can't beat a sponge. So yes, this one looks beat up. I've got like a thousand of these on backup, but I just, I love them. They're so easy to use. I digress, let's keep going. So that's foundation. Powder for today is the Huda Beauty. Huda, in the color Pound Cake. Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. I don't bake with this. You guys, I'm in my mid 40s. I tried to bake, I did, I'm gonna admit it. This was back when I first started watching YouTube makeup videos and I saw everyone doing it and I thought, well, that's it. That's what I'm missing out on, I need to bake. <laughs> And I tried it, I tried it, you guys. I tried it two or three times and I looked like the Sahara Desert. It aged me at least, at least 4,586 years. You could see every line on my face. It was just an, a hot mess of a disaster. No baking for Veronica. But what I will do, and I love this netting here, I'll just turn this sideways or upside down and take a big powder brush the same one I've been showing you. You guys, I do have other big powder, powder brushes, I promise. I have about 10 of them, but <laughs> this is just close by while I'm filming. So, and I will tap it in there, get the excess off, and then just go into my T-zone. And that'll help keep the excess oil at bay during the day. This stuff smells fantastic if you don't mind uh, fragrance in your products. Really nice scent. My bronzer today is the NARS Laguna Matte. This is a gorgeous bronzer. It does really well on the skin. It's easy to apply. If I can open it, I will show you. Really nice sort of golden brown color. I take a big brush that is densely packed though. You want a densely packed brush for this. And I will go all over the edges of my face and in the hollows of my cheeks. If I don't have a separate contouring product, I'll just use bronzer for a little bit of contour. Don't tell the makeup artist that, they get real funny. They get really funny when you tell them that you use bronzer as contour. They will tell you in a minute, bronzing is not contouring, and they are correct. However, you guys, I'm, I'm just hanging out at home, video conferencing today, cut me some slack. Okay. My, um, ooh, I forgot to share with you all that I applied a little bit of this L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion. This is in the color medium. They have a light and then they have a dark version as well. And it says natural glow enhancer. And that's really exactly what it is. It does give a little bit of luminosity. You could mix this with your foundation. I've done that. I don't like the effect. It's too much for me. I feel like I look a little bit crazy. Now, I will say if it's a summer evening and you've got like an evening event and you want to get just a little bit, a little bit more flossy than usual, sure, you can do that. But like for an everyday look, it's just a bit much. But what I will do with this, after I apply my foundation, I usually just take, if I use it at all, I don't always use this stuff, but I want it to today. I will take just a couple of drops and then tap it out where I would put highlighter. So on the tops of my cheeks. Um, sometimes I will put it under my brow bone where I'm going to put that little extra light. And I did that today. I might put it a little bit on the bridge of my nose and just a little bit over both of my eyebrows, just a little bit to sort of enhance the, the, the shine effect in that area. Okay. Moving along then on the cheeks today where we are, we have gone and I was going to say, we're going to go in. We went in already. Okay, with the <laughs> Jouer Cheeky Summer Blush Duo. This is in Terracotta Sands and Hot Coral. Hot Coral. <laughs> Beautiful warm tones here. Um, and I know this one looks a little bit weird, but it works fine. So anyway, I'll dip my brush in both of these back and forth, just kind of swirl them around. Um, and I want to share with you a little technique that I learned from Michelle Wong. And she learned it from Charlotte Tilbury. And that is to take your brush. So here's my blush brush. I used a Chikahoto, um, a Chikahoto, I think this is squirrel hair brush. But so imagine that this is your cheek. One day I might get bold and just do an online, like show my face tutorial, but today's not that day. So dip your, you know, your, your blush. And if this is your cheek, here's your ear over here. Instead of swiping like that, Put it at the very top and do that motion. 
I know that sounds so crazy. Like, does that really make a difference? But what it does is deposits most of the product then up a little bit higher on your cheekbone instead of on the very apple of your cheek closer to your nose. It does it a little bit farther back and a little higher back and helps to lift your entire cheek look. In case you were wondering what I was doing with this hand, I was actually putting it on my face like I'm showing you all over here and you can't see me. <laughs> oh, YouTube. Anyway, so once again, the top part of your cheek here and do that motion back up towards your ear. Love it. Makes a huge difference, something that simple. I know that sounds crazy, but you got to trust me sometimes. My highlighter today is the Becca in Opal. I have just a little, a little mini of this. It's not too bright um, and it's not too dark. It does have this sort of goldish kind of sheen that will work well with the palette that I'm going to show you because this, this mother here is the star of the show. We're going to get to you in a minute. I see you. Uh, and then I finished off my, my, my base look with the Hourglass. Oh, the ambient lighting palette, ambient lighting palette. This has three powders in it, dim light, incandescent, and radiant light. And I learned about this a few years ago from Kathleen Lights when she was reviewing her most luxury products. She mentioned this palette. You can see I've made a pretty good dent in it. There's a you know, hole starting to develop in the, the baked formula. But she mentioned she takes a big brush and she just, you know, runs it along the whole thing. And... um. Uh, grazes the, the sides of her face, like the outside, the perimeter of her face, is, which is exactly what I did. And what do these powders do? Lots of different things. You can use them for different purposes, but for today, I use them to sort of blur the edges of my face. A little bit goes a long way. Don't go in with too much or it'll be a little shiny, but just a little light application with a big brush will help to give you sort of a photo finish, blurred effect. It's really subtle, but it does make a difference. Um, so that's that. So, I'm sorry, and then I set everything with the Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray from Catrice. Really great setting spray from the drugstore, low price. All right. Oh, I keep saying all right like I'm going to get to this next. Real quick. Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes from Charlotte Tilbury for the mascara today. And then the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit in 3.5, the brown color, to do my lashes and my eyebrows. All right. Now, let's talk about this magnificent lady here. <sighs> Let me open it up. First of all, this is a Pat McGrath palette. The Mothership. What is your formal name? The Mothership 6 Midnight Sun. The packaging is to die for on all of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. It's part of the experience to sort of open it and unfold it. Is this packaging impractical? 100%. <laughs> Do I love it? 100%. You can't tell me differently about this packaging. I think it is just so gorgeous. Okay, let's go inside and let's talk to the palette. I'm going to actually bring out the the card it comes with, you know, the card that has the colors on it. I find that a little bit impractical. In fact, I've been meaning to just sort of, oops, sorry for shaking the camera. I've been meaning to glue this inside of there because it's kind of annoying that it falls out all the time. But that's all right. We're going to we're going to look past that because the packaging is so darn gorgeous. In fact, let's keep it in frame. So if you're not familiar with Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, they are ridiculously priced, but in my opinion, worth it if you don't mind dropping a little bit of money on an eyeshadow palette. It's a total luxe experience with this really heavy, lacquered um, eyeshadow you know, palette container. Uh, it does come with, oops, I don't wanna blind you. It does come with this beveled mirror I could care less about that. In fact, I haven't even taken. You see, you guys? You see what I mean? I haven't even. Ah, oh, that's so satisfying. I haven't even taken the sticker off because I never look in the mirrors and the palettes. I just find them a total, you know, waste of packaging. But what a gorgeous palette. This is called Midnight Sun. Now, if you want to learn about Pat McGrath palettes in detail, there are a few folks online that do really outstanding reviews 
but my favorite among them is Kinky Sweat. One word, Kinky Sweat. That's her name. She's on YouTube, and her name is Alicia, and she does absolutely fantastic reviews of both Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath and a lot of other luxury brands. Check out her videos. Type in Pat McGrath and Kinky Sweat, and you'll get a whole slew of videos where she goes into detail about all of the shadows, how they perform, how you can work them together, so on and so forth. That's not what I'm here to do. I just want to show you what I'm wearing today. So what I love about all of the Pat McGrath palettes is that they have on the left side six shades that I consider more kind of normal-ish, you know, that you can wear to the office. And then four shades on the other side that are like astral or special shades that have a lot of like a glittery effect. There'll be duochrome or whatever. And so this color here, which is the Blitz Violet Orchid, is one of the stars of this palette, as is Blood Moon 005 here. Um, but what I did today, because I do have work video conferencing all day, and I don't want my colleagues to think I have lost all of my mind. They already think I wear too much makeup, I'm sure, but that's all right. I uh, went in all over with this color Taboo. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, I... Now listen, I put this on very early this morning. It will take me, will take me all the way through the late evening. So let's say between 5 and 6 in the morning I applied this, 5 and 6 a.m. And I will go wash my face probably about 9 o'clock or 10. Everything will be right in place just as I applied it. So anyway, that's taboo. This was an all over um, eye look. I mean, eye color rather. And then I started to do a little bit of sculpting with this Vermilion Venom, which is this gorgeous brownish red. Now, I just applied it a lot uh, deeper and darker than I put it on my eyes. I would advise you all to check out Mario, and I can't remember his last name, it starts with a D, but just type in Kim Kardashian makeup artist and watch how he does Kim Kardashian's eyes. He does this thing where he will take a darker color like that and sort of, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this model as an example because it's exactly right. You see how above her eyelid, up here, there's a darker color and he takes the color and he pulls it all the way up to right at the nose and it gives the impression, it sounds crazy. And here's why it sounds crazy because if you are an 80s kid like me, and you started playing with makeup then and really learning it in the 90s and so forth. We grew up in the Mary Kay days where there were only three colors to apply, right? And then the darker color was only out here in the outer crease. But what Mario does is he takes a good swath of, of darker color and brings it up here to the nose area. What it does is exactly as it does on this model, creates the impression of a deeper, darker socket. And, and it gives you a much more sultry look that way if that's what you're going for. You don't always have to do that. But it's nice every once in a while. So that's what I did with this color. I then took Wicked Envy, which is this nice green shimmery color with a little bit of gold. And put that on the outer half of my eyelid with this bronze eclipse on the inner half. I then because I like to get a little crazy, y'all, every now and then, just a little bit. I went in with this Jubilee. Now this is, this is a lot. This is a lot <laughs> for a work day. But what I did is in between the two colors here, in between Bronze Eclipse and um, this Wicked Envy, right on my eyelids, I just tapped just like that, like right in between on the very tops of my eyelids. And it just adds just a nice transition with a little hint of pop that isn't that crazy. It's not that crazy. Then I took uh, Extreme Dusk, this darker color here. I'm running out of clean fingers, you guys. And I used it as an, an eyeliner. So I went in with, I'll show you. This is Sonia G Flat Definer. I don't think this is intended to be used as I did, but I used it as an eyeliner, you know, and I took a little bit and then I went in and just did like a really wide eyeliner on the outer corners of my eyes and then underneath um, on the lower lid. I also went on the lower lid with 
taboo and blew it out a little bit with that a little bit of the vermilion venom on the outer half and then this on the very outer third very outer third as you get older like me you want to do less and less eyeliner all over the eye unless you're going for a really dramatic nighttime smoky look and you want to sort of just leave it to like the outer third of your eyes so ladies and gents that is my eyeshadow for the day none other than the iconic and amazing mothership six midnight sun love the name too midnight sun and the artwork and then i will finish off the look this i haven't done yet but i will right after right after we finish filming i will apply my lip products which today it's going to be for a little liner mark jacobs o coco It's a very creamy liner. It's almost too creamy in that for the price tag, it starts to sort of slip off too early for me. But I do love this color, and I think it goes so nicely with the autumn light -like colors in this palette. And then my lip is going to be, I love this name, you guys. This is, <laughs> this is from Lorac. It is Granny Mamie. Granny Mamie from the Ultra Ego Lorac line. Look at this beautiful peachy orangey color with a hint of brown in it. I think it's gonna look fabulous with this look. And I will top that then with a little bit of Rimmel Stay Glossy. And I can never find where the color is on this. But this sort of, what in the world are you called? The people are waiting. They're waiting for that color. No, they're not. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. This color. <laughs> Just give a little bit of extra oomph right in the middle of my lip to give it that kind of pouty look. All right. If you would like to see this finished look, you are welcome to check out the photos that I will post on Instagram. My handle there is like the name of this channel, except no space or underscores. It's just Veronica says all. Veronica says all. Look forward to seeing you all over there. If you liked what you saw and you want to check out my um, other, other reviews uh, for makeup and um, fragrances and, and other random house products and sort, and, he, and hear me ramble some more because that's what I'm doing now, <laughs> I hope you'll hit that like button and I hope you'll subscribe so that we can hang out again. Have a blessed and wonderful day, everyone. Take care.